Welcome to this gns3.org presentation. This presentation is sponsored by configureterminal.com. I'm David Bombal, CCIE 11023, and in this short video I want to show you how to download, install, and get GNS3 working. The first step is to download GNS3 from the website gns3.net. On the front page of the website, on the right hand side, there's an icon that allows you to download the software. So click on the icon to download GNS3. Various downloads are then listed and you need to choose the download for your specific operating system. In my case, I'm going to download GNS3 version 074 all-in-one for Windows. You're redirected to sourceforge.net for the actual download. The download should start automatically otherwise you can click on the direct link or try a mirror. I'm going to click on the security bar to start the download. I'm then going to click save to save the file to my machine. I'm going to save this on my desktop so I'll click save and the file will download. Once GNS3 has downloaded click on the run button click run to start the installation you're welcome to the GNS3 setup wizard so I'm going to click next. I suggest you read the license and then if you agree click on the I agree button to continue. I'm going to stay with the defaults in this installation so I'm going to click next to set the folder name in the start menu to GNS3. Certain software is required for GNS3 to function including WinPCAP and Dynamips. So I'm going to click next to install the required software. I'm just going to choose the default installation folder and click install. You prompted to install WinPCAP so I'm going to click next to install WinPCAP. Agree once again to the license. Automatically start the WinPCAP driver at boot time and click install. Click finish to end the WinPCAP installation. The GNS3 installation will then continue. Various required software is installed. And then click finish to complete the GNS3 installation. Before running GNS3 we need to configure various options including the iOS that we're going to be using. Now please don't ask me to provide an iOS. You need to provide your own iOS or operating system. However, on GNS3.org on the main page under the FAQs notice this option, can you give me an iOS? And as I've mentioned, I'm not able to give you an operating system. You have to provide your own operating system to use with GNS3. It's important to realize that GNS3 does not include the operating system images. These are copyrighted and are the property of Cisco Systems. You can download an iOS from Cisco.com. You need to log in and then download the operating system. There are operating systems available online but I do not recommend that you download these as you breaking copyright regulations. Once again please do not ask me to provide you with an operating system. On this link on Cisco.com, so on the Cisco forums, so on the Cisco support community you can see people are asking for operating systems to use with GNS3 and various answers are provided including showing you links on the internet. You once again use these at your own risk and I don't recommend that you use them but be aware this information is available online. 
So in my case, I've downloaded a 3660 image from Cisco.com and I'm going to start GNS3. When GNS3 starts up for the first time, you're prompted to complete the setup wizard. In step one, you're going to configure and test the path to Dynamips. Dynamips is essentially the software that enables the running of Cisco IOSs on your PC. GNS3 is a graphical interface to Dynamips and Dynagen. So let's choose step one. So in the preferences, there are various options. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to Dynamips and notice the executable path is set here. We're going to enable sparse memory support to better utilize our memory and we're going to click on test to test the path to Dynamips. As you can see Dynamips has successfully started. If you have issues click on this button and point it to the directory where Dynamips is found. So the file we're looking for is Dynamips-WXP. So in my case that's where the file is. I'm going to click open and notice the executable path changes. That will solve an issue that's fairly common for a lot of people. Click test and hopefully you should see that Dynamips has successfully started and then click OK. The next step is to add one or more uncompressed iOS images. So step two, I'm going to choose this option to select the image file. And I'm going to point it to my desktop where my image file is stored and I'm going to click open. The next step is to click save and then click close. Click OK to the setup wizard because we've completed the setup wizard. Now, As you'll notice on the node types various routers are supported including 1700s, 2600s, 2691s, 3600s, 3700s and 7200s. In my example I have an image for a 3600 once again to see that if I go to edit iOS images and hypervisors you'll be able to see that I've got an image for a 3660. Notice the platform is a 3600 and the actual model is a 3660 so I'll just click close. To set up a basic network all I'm going to do is drag a 3600 router to the topology pane. At the moment you can see router 1 is stopped. You can see it's a 3660 with 128 meg of RAM. So I'm going to right click on the router and I'm going to choose the option start. Notice in the topology summary pane the router is shown as started. It's very important that you do the following. Otherwise your CPU will go to 100%. Right click on your router and then choose the option Idle PC. GNS3 will calculate idle PC values. In the list try and choose a value marked with a star. If no option is available what I would do is just right click again and select idle PC once again. If nothing's available, choose one of the options, but I would run this a few times until I see one with a star. In my example, I'm just going to choose two. As you can see, the idle PC value has been applied. That will reduce the CPU utilization dramatically on your PC. That's how you configure basic GNS3 with a single router. To set up a topology between the two routers, you simply drag another router to the topology pane. Then on the top on the menu you can add a link between the two routers. So in my example I'm going to choose 
fast ethernet and then all you do is drag a connection between the two routers so that will set up an ethernet connection between the two routers these options here allow you to see for instance router names and connection names so I'll, I'll click again on the add link option and now I can for instance move the interface names and make the diagram more readable notice router 2 is currently off and router 1 is on to access the router you right click on the router and go to console in this example router 1 is already booted so I can just hit enter to enter the router's configuration and notice I'm in user mode pressing question mark will allow me to see any CLI commands in user mode I can type EN tab this is as close as you're gonna get to a real router GNS3 is very very powerful so I'm going to start up router 2 and then I'm going to open a console connection to router 2 as you can see here the router is busy booting and then I can hit return or enter to get started on this router I can for instance type the command show IP interface brief to see a list of interfaces as you can see fast ethernet 00 is shut down so let's configure the two routers with IP addresses and see if we can get them to ping each other so I'm going to put a label on our diagram router 1 is going to have an IP address of 10.1.1.1 router 2 is going to have an IP address of 10.1.1.2 so on our routers on router 1 going on to interface F0 slash 0 and typing no shut and giving it an IP address of 10.1.1.1 slash 24 mask and then going on to router 2 I'll give it an IP address of 10.1.1.2 slash 24 mask no shut it interfaces come up I'll press control Z and then hopefully we should be able to ping router 1 And as you can see, the ping was successful. I'll just do it again. Notice 100% success rate. So that's how you set up a basic topology using GNS3. That concludes this introductory video to GNS3. GNS3, in conjunction with Dynamips and DynaGen, is a very powerful hardware emulator which allows you to run actual Cisco IOS's on your PC. This is great for study purposes as you are able to create complicated topologies without purchasing hardware. This was a basic introduction to GNS3. Please see our other videos on GNS3.org for more detailed information regarding GNS3. This video was sponsored by ConfigureTerminal.com where you can get more free information on our blog as well as purchase video training material and other training resources for study of topics ranging from CCNA to CCIE. Thank you for watching.